How do you say Happy New Year, Yoshi, in whatever language you want? In Japanese, it's like the congratulations on the beginning. You know, or Oshogatsu uh, Omedato, you know, Happy New Year. But, uh, you know, it's a quiet holiday in Japan. Everyone uh, rests and, uh, you know, doesn't cook, doesn't do any work. They just want a quiet beginning of the year. Although it's from an older holiday, you know, this is a solar year, and uh, we're talking about a much um, uh, older time, you know, when people celebrated that. So. Yeah. But still uh, goes, you know. It's not a big party time. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, there's anyway. no reason, no reason, no reason to party at all. Abe has made his, and you predicted this, his pronouncement oh, that yeah. there will be, not maybe, there will be more nuclear yeah. plants built in Japan. So nuclear power wins. The yeah. Japanese people lose. Big nuclear power will get bigger now in Japan. Oh yeah, I mean the the people who. You know, thought they were being conservative, wanted to oppose the Democrat Party, did not want to support the sort of the startup of the new uh, anti-nuke party called the Future Party, uh, and took on this whole conservative guys. They're all in shock. All of Abe supporters are stunned. Even his foreign minister says, uh, Kishida says that, uh, you know, LDP's got to stick to the non-nuclear huh. principle uh-huh. of not possessing nuclear weapons. But Abe is just going ahead full force, and, you know, uh, a lot of these people who support him are going to find out that they're the insiders, you know, they have to go along with the program, or they got to watch out what happens to them when they go home at night, you know? It's, it's, it's that uh, bad, huh? Wow. We've seen this before in Japan from Abe's people. I told you that my uh, managing editor, former managing editor of Japan Times, was found at his doorway with his skull bashed in, okay, after the Tokyo subway gathering. I remember that, and yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah, they took him out, and there were a series of killings at the time. And this guy, this prime minister, uh, you know, I really think there's something brain deficient about him. There's a piece of his brain missing. He's just like a robot trying to fulfill his grandfather's dream of making this uh, world into one huge Manchuria, which was a gigantic death camp, you know, a militarized death yeah, camp. Yeah. And he's following this, and I, it's just incredible that the Japanese people know this history, you know, they, they know all about this, and they still voted him because they just gave up all other hope. Now, now they're, you know, they're going to face the bullet now because this, this fellow is very serious, and unless he's stopped by an accident or an assassin or something, you know, or a heart attack, uh, he's going to push his agenda of rearming Japan to the teeth, of provoking all kinds of trouble. And I think you read, when you hear the uh, newscasters, not just from China, but from places like Singapore, Thailand. They're they're generally uh, they're genuinely worried that this guy is going to try to start World War II again, a, a World War Three. That you know they're they're very worried that uh, this man is a diehard and uh, he's in he's in charge, he's in power, and anyone who opposes him you know, faces a uh, mortality crisis ahead. So. Yeah, we're in for a rough road ahead. That is the bad news. He, he just he news just news made uh, he just made his obligatory trip to Fukushima, the wrecked Daiichi plant, and and uh, didn't stay long. But uh, he didn't stay long. He went to J Village and just dropped into the Fukushima one plant, and that's it. Just a quick visit. Right. Basically, he needs to do that because he's relying on these workers to restart Fukushima one and two. You know so. And whatever else is going on. I mean, you know, those nuclear plants are not the only show up there to start the whole works again. So, you know, uh, that was his obligatory thing. He had to do that to uh, let them know that they're going to go ahead and push nuclear all the way. Perfectly safe. Nothing yeah. to worry about. Uh, now, we got the, uh, the the story. The U.S. Navy apparently did not oppose the sailors filing against TEPCO. We talked about this when yeah. it happened. The USS Ronald Reagan right. flew, uh, right. huh? it, it sailed its way through, there they were flying plumes of deadly radiation, two of them moving right offshore, and apparently the Reagan went through yeah. those plumes twice. Now we've seen pictures of the yeah. crew uh-huh. with no protection. A lot protection. of helicopter crews too. That's right, yeah, absolutely, exactly. yeah. flew mean, right was, through it. We're talking about, we're talking about 3,000 sailors aboard, a couple thousand air crew, you know, about people who fix planes and all, not just the pilots. So we're talking about a massive exposure 
without warning, you know, like everything's okay, everything is safe from the Japanese government, you know, minor accident, and uh, their alarms go off. Yeah, and it, I hope the Navy, you know, I hope the higher ups don't get to the data that was collected, the record there on the Reagan, on the USS Reagan. That you know, they obviously are prepared for nuclear war. They have some of the best radiation detectors in yep. the world there aboard. Yep, yep. And they picked up stuff right down there in the air vents. You know, one of the uh, plaintiffs in the case, two uh, of two them, two of them worked down in the uh, yeah air vent system where they they watch what's coming in. To the aircraft carrier, and a lot of it apparently did, because as we discussed earlier, aircraft carrier was later used just to ferry cars around. You know, so this is how the a, hell do you de- how do you coming. how do you decontaminate the inside of an aircraft carrier that holds five thousand people? And if those guys at the NBC intake vents didn't shut them down, that stuff, including yeah. plutonium and everything else, went throughout that ship. Yeah. Well, you can do it, but it will cost you more than building probably a new aircraft carrier because I think the Reagan cost about four and a half billion dollars to build. But uh, you know, I, I think you, you got to understand these things are expensive uh, pieces of equipment to change the, uh, the whole uh, you know fuel assembly in there and to put in a new shroud in the reactors aboard the Reagan. That's a two billion dollar job right there. So we're talking about. You know, this is this would be a massive overhaul, costing more than construction ships. So, by all rights, you know, the Japanese government for for this cover up, and we're not talking about you know it being uh, the China or some like Chinese or Russian aircraft there. We're talking about USA. Uh, Japan's got a security treaty. We we don't know. We may have we may have United States. We we may have lost the Reagan. We're talking about liability you know, for uh, what yeah. you know uh, for. Uh, for the cost of the Reagan, for then decommissioning cost is going to cost a couple billion dollars. So. We may have lost the and useful then, uh, life of that carrier. For those five thousand service people aboard, can you imagine the bill yeah. for that? For this no. uh, deception that no. went on, no, no, no. and allowing these people to get in—I mean, your allies—to come in that close, allowing them and not warning them off. And uh, when you know, uh, you see these explosions <laughs> blowing, you know. Uh, radio, uh, uh, radioactive particles right out into the Pacific, and, and at the time there was, you know, uh, leakage out of the obviously out of the reactors into the Pacific. So it's just really out of order. It's like you know, it's you know, you can't do these things. And and, and given the fact that military alliances, a lot of security and military intelligence lines, they should have at least off the books gave a warning. They did not do that. So this is incredible criminal action against an ally. You know, I, I just, it's just unbelievable what's done. And, uh, well, they, they, they just standing <laughs> firm, you know. I still say that we may have lost the Reagan. I mean, it may be beyond Well, it, yeah, it should be decommissioned, and the uh, uh, Japanese government should pay the price for it. Maybe it'll help draw down some of the, uh, some of the debt there, you know. So, yeah, it should definitely, uh, be decommissioned. The problem is, what we're, I think the, uh, the other worrisome thing is that, you know, while the uh, Department of Navy may want to release data, it's not clear that the higher-ups in the National Security Agency will allow that to happen. Already, you know, uh, this morning the Japan Times had a story on the leak from the uh, uh, American uh, 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 Nuclear Safety Administration. They sent a team over to Japan. They had uh, planes flying some like 100 missions taking yeah. Findings of the radioactivity, airborne radioactivity. Unfortunately, uh, okay, the Jap- one, their complaint was the Japanese government even didn't even accept the data, didn't want to hear about it after all this effort made by the American Armed Forces and the, uh, the Department of Energy and all. But the other problem here is that the data itself looks like it was tampered with by people high up in the U.S. government. And what I'm saying is they flew a lot of missions over the Fukushima one, around and over the Fukushima plant, and determined that there was no fire inside Reactor 4. Now, we've seen videos of the fire, right? Raging fires, right? That's right. All sorts of videos, right? From mm-hmm. security cameras yep. and all yep. that. We've seen raging fire. We know it caught it, and we see all the bent metal and twisted metal. There obviously was a fire. So somebody in Washington tampered with the data that came out of those 100 missions that were flown by the U.S. Air Force. So 
this is really high-level conspiracy on both governments to cover up the thing. And, you know, they're, they're sacrificing the American servicemen. Imagine all the ser- servicemen who are flying up there, too. All the servicemen who are flying up there. People all out of Misawa Air Base. That's right. You know, out of Atsugi Naval Air Station and Naval Flyers. Imagine, they weren't told what was, you know, and they were being told, fed at the time, everything's okay. There's nothing wrong. But, you know, uh, and then their data was suppressed, uh, was rejected by the Japanese government. But somehow, someone got a hand in there at the Pentagon or at uh, even higher, maybe, you know, the National Security Agency. Someone has suppressed their findings. And this is a worrisome thing about the Reagan. The ship has got a lot of data. They took the reading. Who's got the data now? Who's in charge? And uh, a spotlight's going to have to be put there. If there's a cover-up going on Washington, this is the time and place to find it and bust it and get the real data that the Americans collected out to the public. And in this court case, obviously. And we certainly support the, uh, you know, I'm a real critic, too, of, uh, you know, the bases in Okinawa and the uh, you know, use of Yokosuka. I've always been, throughout my journalism uh, career, critic of the presence of too many uh-huh. American forces there, oh, yeah. which are not necessary not to at all. in Japan or used no. for wars in other places. But when you talk about the service people, you know, they're, they're the kid next door, the guy next in the, in, you know, sitting at the bar that you're drinking with and all that. You know, I mean, uh, certainly they have every right in the world, just like everyone else, to be told the truth about their health. And uh, especially when it comes in an allied country, uh, in, in, in conditions that are not at war. Well, it's uh, it's a situation again that is only getting worse. Arnie Gunderson is now suggesting that the salt water may be accelerating the well. It's just deconstruction, basically, the disintegration of these. Spent well, fuel that, ports. that's known. Obviously, the corrosion all systems. It's nothing salt new, water, but uh, no, no one's talking. These metals are really overheated to high temperatures. Obviously, it's just going to you know of weaken the systems more. Situation is just completely declining, and Abe is not saying giving any single solution how he's going to deal with this damage, this irreparable damage done. And the, and the meltdown, all he's talking about is building new ones. This is something, like, ridiculous, you know. I mean, you know, we've, we, we've seen a major pileup on the highway, and the officials talk about it'll be open in 10 minutes. This is nonsense. Well, well the, the other story in the Japan Times today, uh-huh. today also, New Year's, is the record drop in Japan's population in this last year, 2012, Okay. Uh, Tell me more. Of the, uh, the rate, the rate, the rate of drop, not the drop in population, but the rate of death mm-hmm. versus birth, okay? Mm-hmm. This is very unusual because the highest drop was in 2011 because of those 16,000 deaths and 2,000 missing from the uh, tsunami and earthquake, right? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, in the Tohoku region. So, la- uh, year 2011 was the record high. This is the second uh, highest death level for the country ever in, since records, since at least since World War II. Yeah, I mean, you know, there are higher re- re- rates before during the war. I understand. But since World War II. Right. Yeah. And it's got the, we had the uh, lowest number of births this past year in 2012, the lowest number of births, uh-huh. okay, this year. But if you look at the difference, okay, what's very interesting is that there's been a pattern of something like seven years of uh, uh, declining population, okay, so five years, uh, five previous years, but six, seven years of declining population. And according to the CIA fact book, okay, according to the CIA demographic study, they expected in 2012 a bounce back to the 2007 era, you know, whole, uh, whole uh-huh. point down from uh-huh. 10%, uh, t- t- 10 out of 1,000 people uh, dying to down to 9 out of 1,000. They dropped, uh, expected a huge drop, okay? But instead, we see it hovering just about the 2011 rate. Now, the other thing is the death rates in 2012 were only 8,000 less than 2011 when the disaster occurred. Okay, that's 8,000. Now, you've got 16,000 reported dead, 2,000 missing. Right. So we're talking actually... If you subtract the effects of the earthquake and the tsunami, we actually saw a rise of 12,000 people more dead this year. 
Okay? <laughs> and the leading mm -hmm. causes, they said, were cancer and heart attack. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay? So these, we said before, radiation-related deaths. Unquestionably. So being attributed, yeah. misattributed, or, you know, alternatively attributed to the symptoms, which are cancer and heart attack. Okay? And also... Uh, 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 nervous disorders related to, uh, you know, blood. All, 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 basically all related to radiation. So we're seeing a death wave sweeping across Japan. All right? Now the other problem we have simultaneously in this winter season, you've heard of these Norwalk virus or norovirus deaths in Japan. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Right? Two cruise ships now are heavily infested with that, by the way. Yeah. Feed your, feed your homes. In your homes, okay. Now, one of the problems we discussed was the lack of ventilation. Uh, you know, you know, indoor air quality uh, it's, it's, it's transmitted through the bathrooms, uh, through the toilets, and so on. But Japan, Japanese places are pretty sterile. You know, they're 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 bleaching every every hour or so. The other is the aging population. I would say uh, weakened immune systems from radiation. But the other problem, you know, uh, that we cannot overlook. And simultaneously as this norovirus crisis is happening, one of the leading Japanese pharmaceutical companies called Takeda, Takeda Pharmaceuticals, is developing a norovirus vaccine with this outfit in uh, Bozeman, Montana, okay, called Lycosite, which is a spinoff of Merck. You know the Merck company? They were sure. in involved with the whole Vioxx scandal, all right? Vioxx scandal. Okay, so they're developing a norovirus vaccine at this very moment as these people are dying far south of Japan in Yokohama. And the other big vaccine development that uh, Takeda is dealing with now is with, uh, with Baxter Pharmaceuticals, which was involved in that uh, Factor Eight blood scandal, which spread HIV all across the world through hemophilia. Okay, there was mm -hmm. HIV virus in supposedly in this in this blood that was uh, uh, blood uh, with the uh, factor eight, which is used to compensate for uh, uh, the hemophiliac genetic defects. So we see here virus development from two known companies with very poor ethics, very dodgy histories of uh, possibly spreading. The, the diseases, the viruses, along with putting out the anti-viral, uh, you know, uh, vaccine. So very dangerous situation because we talked earlier about you know WHO and uh, uh, what's the name of that big one? Uh, 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 Glaxo, Glaxo, uh, oh, GX, developing pneumonia yeah. vaccine. GSK. You know? So the whole idea of using the flu season, using the time when people are trapped indoors to take out all potential victims of radiation-related disease. Knock them out now over the coming months. And so not surprising when some demographics experts were wa watching after six years of population decrease was thought that this year would be the year when, the, you know, all that would end because of all the damage out of 2011. They expected to bounce back. In fact, we actually see, in terms of non-tsunami, non-earthquake-related deaths, actually more people dying in Japan. So, you know, uh, are the Japanese people being killed off under a secret program? We've seen so much cover-up. Oh, it's you sickening. Know, I mean, yeah. So much. Uh, We're getting I, stories I mean, now all the time of women crazy. losing their yeah. hair. You've Anything heard these. Is possible. You've heard the stories of how many people are losing their hair, young women wearing wigs now uh, in yeah. the Fukushima area. It's it's just outrageous. And what does the government say about it? Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. You know, these are more people to be eliminated in the coming year, 2013. And we have to keep a sharp eye on them. You know, maybe norovirus, after we made all this noise about pneumonia, they switched to norovirus, which is diarrhea causing stomach cold virus you know they have a lot of tricks up their sleeves and uh taking out a large section of an aging population is no problem for these people no problem at all when the urgent task ahead is to build more nuclear plants 
get Fukushima restarted, when that's the number one priority, when uh, the defense budget has to be ramped up and you got to get more destroyers and aircraft, you know, and build possibly... What are they going to do, Yochi, y- Yochi, what are they going to do with mm-hmm. China over these uh, these little disputed islands? Is Abe going to make that a well, big China deal? China has just shifted a number of their large destroyers, missile-carrying destroyers. Three of them have been sh- uh, shifted to their Coast Guard, their maritime uh, safety force. So the Chinese are... They obviously don't like Abe. I mean, you know, the, you know, the Koreans. Don't, I mean, there's a lot of people who don't like uh, this Abe government and where it's going. So uh, we expect a collision ahead where he's going to be. You know, someone's going to give him a slap, and I don't think Washington's going to be jumping to his aid because obviously Washington itself has been on the target list after he presided over hacking into. Pentagon, right. and DARPA, you know, uh, right. defense research computers. After a guy's done this, you know, he cannot be counted on as a friend. We'll see how they handle this case against TEPCO. I mean, I seriously doubt if they're going to, you know, give the apologies to the American sailors and servicemen. I mean, the airmen up in uh, Misawa Air Bay, all the yeah. American servicemen there in Japan, thirty thousand. Uh, you know, uh, people plus the, the, the ships that were offshore. You know, uh, there should have been, an, a, a, besides a thanks, an apology forthcoming. No, we're seeing nothing. It's just being ignored. <laughs> so, you know, now the Americans are, are there with the, you know, the comfort women the, the, from uh, China and Korea and all that. You know, just you people don't exist. You were just necessary casualties in our greater cause of rebuilding our vast empire out there. And go away. You know, go home. Forget about it. Go away. This is the message coming out of Tokyo. And, you know, it's shameful. It's just incredible. The, that's why the Asians are very alarmed. They're seeing this stuff. He, he plans to reverse the Murayama, Prime Minister Murayama, right. apology for the damage done to the Asian people during World War II. <laughs> so people are very alarmed. Well, what is going on? Where is Japan going? Are they crazy? Are, you know, this is not. The rest of the world doesn't look at things that way. So we are we are in for some you know rough rough flooding ahead this winter. Could you see a, a limited military exchange over the islands at any point? Well, I think the Chinese are just setting up a situation. They just they just they just hoping you know that the you know the Japanese side you know pulls the trigger, does something, and Abe you know tries to do something crazy. And, you know, the planes that came in, they're worried about helico- helipads and, and docks being built on the island. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, the historical case, I would say both sides have a claim. We'll take it to the world court, but Japan doesn't want to, obviously, because of you know, China has already submitted a, its claim to the United Nations, which mm-hmm. would be preliminary to the world court. So Japan will probably lose in the world court. So. All right. Um, this is really uh, an attempt to drag, you know, I mean, what what these fellows in uh, Tokyo are trying to do, the LDP, they're trying to drag America into a conflict with China at a time when, you know, the, with a the fiscal cliff and all that, it's not feasible for America to go up against China, right, without just wiping out the American economy. And at a time that, you know, Libya and Syria, all these problems are resurfacing in the Middle East. So uh, these people intend to drag America in into a sort of bloodbath with China, wipe out both of them, you know, pass on both your houses, and then preside over the rise of Japan and Korea again, the old empire again, as a dominant world power. This is real madness. You know, that truly is. not a strategy. Great, great way to yeah, start it's not off a strategy. the new it's year. It's a fantasy. It's just a sick, sick fantasy. Well, I agree. There's a lot of that so running around. Style the fact. Yeah, that his grandfather was a war criminal responsible for the death of millions of people. And millions of innocent people died. It was all wrong. You know, Pearl Harbor, they were there cheering that on when it was ridiculous. Up to that point, Japan was an, an ally of the United States and England. And uh, why it did these things has to do with a lot of apocalyptic uh, beliefs. All a true. Lot of people thought, right, you know, uh, yep. that we have to help bring about the end because there'll be better times after a whole human race is killed off. Really <laughs> crazy thinking that we yeah, time and again. Very true. that was a subway gap. That was my point of contact with Abe. Yeah. And All right. Like, we'll keep... Uh, We'll keep on top of it. Thanks for everything this past year, Yochi. We'll continue on uh, next week and next year. So, Happy New Year to you. Thanks again on behalf of a lot of people for the work you do. 
and have a happy new year, everybody. I hope it's uh, good there for you. We need to take a little psychological break from this conference. Well, I agree. Thanks, my friend. Be well. Talk to you soon. Okay. All right. And uh, let me just say happy new year one more time. And I, I hope it is. It's going to be tough. But we'll be here with you every step of the way. And thanks for all your support and your kindnesses to us. Talk to you tomorrow. Okay, here we go, hour number three on this New Year's Eve. Michael Collins, very kindly standing by. I'm not sure where he is standing, but he is he is there. Where are you, Michael? I am in Michigan, and it just turned New Year's Eve. So I'm in 2013, Jeff, and you're in 2012. Never the, I don't know never the gulf has been larger between us. <laughs> And maybe I should have a New Year's resolution to, you know, take a breath and actually uh, converse versus just, just uh, barking. Well, I didn't know. I thought you were two hours later, and I, I greatly appreciate you standing by at this moment of, I don't know if I should call it celebration or not. We, we've we been through hell in 2012, and it doesn't look any cooler for 2013. Yeah, that is a, that's a fact. However, there is one reason to celebrate. Uh, the fact that you've had us on, uh, for, since, uh, uh, very soon after the uh, meltdowns at Fukushima began. Yeah. Uh, March yeah. of 2011. So yeah. that, you know, every week people get to hear stuff that they don't get to hear anywhere else. And because of that, the synergy between us has been really productive. So I'm thankful for that and, uh, look forward to more of it. In uh, 2013. Well, you know, we'll we'll definitely have a, a two year celebratory anniversary here in a couple three months. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now you know, there's plenty of grim things to talk about. Oh man. Uh, but, oh. <laughs> but I will talk about a few good ones, which is all the stuff we covered this year. You know, at the beginning of the year, we found rain in uh, uh, Michigan coming in at uh, 500. Yes. And, 30 some odd, 561 percent above normal, and then 650 percent above normal. We uh, have uh, just on this trip taken uh, uh, Denisian's uh, family has a, uh, uh, a an old butcher scale of all things, and uh, so we collected a uh, kilo of snow, and uh, because then I would be able to actually get a reading on a kilo, but uh-huh. it's not really the snow. And uh, it wasn't very much over background. Uh, however, uh, I slowly let this known amount of uh, uh, mass uh, evaporate and then finally filtered it and tested it uh, five days after sampling it. So all the short-lived radionuclides are, are gone. They're gone. But the medium, they're gone. The medium and the long life are still there, and uh-huh. the snow uh, came in at 54.7% above background. Now, it was almost all beta. I think it is all beta. Uh, this is not from uh, so-called radon progeny. It's been snowing here for, for days before I collected it and made sure to collect the last snow of it. But it gives us an example of what we're faced with because that 54.7% isn't just half background again. Background is really uh, gamma rays coming from the from space or out of the ground, and uh, that exposure is not nearly as dangerous as something like uh, cesium-137 or uh, strontium-90 or uranium-60 buckyballs, which we covered this year. You know, we we really have covered some amazing stuff, Jeff, and the clamp down to not talk about it is so amazing and so severe. There are rays of light, you know. I mean, this Boeing's Meltdown Makeover uh, series that we, we've got out, which is actually over 32,000 words at this point. Well, that's an award winner. I hope you're honored for that. That's a, That was an amazing thing you did. Well, it's not done, then thank you. Uh, we dropped that bomb right before the holidays. Yeah. And it's giving uh, lawmakers and other people like, say, uh, investigators, you know, that investigate crimes and 
you know, like when 40 and a half million American taxpayer dollars go poof in the air because a big polluting company doesn't want to clean up their property, their property that sits at the headwaters of the Los Angeles River, which are trying to restore to the tune of two billion. Yeah. You know, I think, I think some people will pay attention to it. I'll tell you another thing that happens, and you know this as a newsman. You do something like this, other stuff starts coming in. And uh, so we're just uh, glad that uh, uh, we have so much. Well, that's like that's stuff. like taking a question and answer after a major public presentation. You start hearing things that you didn't know. People come forward and tell you exactly. Oh, yeah. And stuff that will make the, you know, the hackles on the back of people's uh, neck, uh, you know, rise up because... Uh, it's so outrageous, you know. You I've have, got a yeah, I've got a story up at the top. Almost the entire ground level of North America, the northern oh. hemisphere, the whole damn thing covered in radioactive fission products after the 311 disaster at Fukushima. No one's talking about that. We were blanketed. You can see the story at the top of the Japan block right above headlines. It's right there. Look and see, folks, what your government didn't tell you about, what you're living with right now, and why navel oranges in California, pistachios, and many other kinds of crops are showing radioactivity. That's why. Not only uh, is the government not telling the people this, government not testing for this, this amazing news, which I check uh, rents.com every day just to go to your uh, uh, collection, uh, Hexoin collection, of articles, because then I know the right ones to look at. This one is particularly disturbing because, you know, the media doesn't cover it either. And the media's attitude is, uh, you know, uh, it's not true. None of this stuff is true. I don't really understand it, but I know that it's not true. True. Well, journalism That's is true. dead, Michael. Journalism in the mainstream, professional, so-called professional media is dead. They're whores. They do nothing original. If they do, their asses out the door. It's a lie. It's a fraud. Oh, yeah. I'll give you a good example. You know, the Los Angeles Times, uh, owned by uh, Tribune, which owns the Chicago Tribune, uh, just came out of bankruptcy protection. Right. Now they're going to be bought by uh, Mur- Murdoch. They're going to be run, but by a Murdoch Fox Entertainment. Yeah, there we go. Detective. That's the end. It's a, come on. It's it, it is what it is, and you just said it. And yet it. you and still <laughs> you still have in Los Angeles this uh, uh, bravado from uh, former Times reporters and and current some current reporters about how badass they are. And you know what? You want to talk about swinging a wiffle ball, Jeff. There you go. You know, when Denise Ann and I knocked this puppy out, Bowie's Meltdown Makeover, we didn't, you know, we didn't do it in a vacuum. Uh, other media was on the story, and it worked. You know, I, I got pretty good connections in the media uh, uh, scene, you know, of, of being in the L.A. Press Club and other connections like that. But the point is, we have a, a uh, sophisticated scheme by a huge company, Boeing, to try to sell Southern California on uh, that their fabulously polluted site that had the worst meltdown in American history in 1959. It's clean. It's great for a part. They get a L.A. Times reporter who was part of winning a Pulitzer Prize, a guy who says that he pioneered environmental journalism in California to come up with a plan to sell us all on this we expose everything from a to z we back it up the great thing about new media if there's any reporters left worth trusting and that have the moxie to go do this stuff is that we can not only back it up we don't have anybody telling us you can't do that now of course we're not going to libel anybody or make big factual mistakes and to the best of our ability but nobody can stop us okay What's the upshot? The upshot is the the stuff has hit the fan. And in this coming year, in 2013, we're going to see the result of it. Because we have a concerted effort of appliant government with 
nothing but animosity and hostility towards the community it's supposed to serve in cahoots with the polluter to greenwash the situation. It's like whitewashing, but with greenwashing, you make the really polluted place with plutonium-239 and 40 and all the radionuclides. You say, it's great, it's great. Look, there's birds. We got guys up counting birds and, you know, measuring the width of butterflies. And all of that hooey has been exposed. And one of the reasons that folks know about it is because you, Jeff, are fearless. And I have people down here that uh, are former L.A. Times uh, folks that have their own, uh, 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 you know, daily wish. They have their own agendas. Right. Right. But but they're painted by themselves into yeah. obscurity. They're yeah. painted into obsolescence. The crap they're pushing, pardon me for using that word, just wants New Year's Eve. The stuff they're pushing is all trying to protect a kingdom that doesn't exist. Exactly. We're, uh, ne- ne- uh, Todd, we're going to go through this break. I'm sorry. forgot to tell you. Go ahead, Michael. They're bankrupt, and their coverage shows it. You know, there was a, a a really good investigative piece that came out of the New York Times in the last week. A lot of people looking at it. It also five parts. Ours is five parts and gonna keep coming. But it addressed in a multimedia fashion uh, a place where you can find Fukushima uh, radioactive fallout, which is high in our mountains in our, uh, our snowpack. And this is about a uh, a group of uh, pros going up and making terrible mistakes and ending up getting mashed by an avalanche. It's really well written. You uh, Even a few films from the helmet cams, it tugs at the heartstrings. And I'm sure, Jeff, that uh, it'll save a few lives, you know, at the old don't go do this kind of story. But when you see media falling all over itself, fawning on what is essentially literal doom porn that doesn't really have that much to do with yeah. what yeah. happens when you walk out in the street and and looking at, at stuff that is so hard-hitting that rips the lid off a huge scandal in L.A. When you see the reluctance to face the music, I got to tell you, Jeff, what it tells Denise Ann and I is we're sitting on a gold mine because the truth is out and uh, it's just really fun reporting it. You know, uh, we don't have an agenda. The truth has an agenda. The truth has revealed itself time and time again since Fukushima. Like, ah, it could never happen. Happened. And you and I haven't even talked about that the incredible amounts of radiation that just reported coming out daily into the Pacific. All of us go on our, uh, you know, uh, go on our Christmas uh, trips. Forget all about it. Don't put those N95 masks on, which are so simple to wear in jets. Forget about the fact that the tuna casserole might be hot, like the one I tested. You only have to put it in the oven. You know, it exactly cooked itself. Fish walk right in, glowing eyes. It's the, the But the thing is, when we look back to, over the year and see all the stuff we discussed and exposed together and come up and connected the dots together, right. there's an amazing amount of stuff that just a few minds can put together. Me, Denise, and you were just, we put this stuff together and it really rocks and people need to know it. Now, the lesson there is this is not completely hopeless. It's just about 99.9% hopeless. But still, still, the measure of a person is what they do, in my opinion, when they know they're doomed. Now, we're all doomed to, you know, shake this mortal coil. There's all sorts of kinds of doom. You know, I'm not doomed to this bottle. I can't put it down. You know, there's all sorts of things that, that can create our doom. However... There is also the ability to do something completely else, uh, different. And, you know, people come to Reds.com, they see the manifestation of it right there. And uh, so, you know, in the in the time of making uh, 
uh, resolutions. I, you know, I'm tired of thinking that people are going to listen to me, Jeff, on how to conduct themselves. But I'll give you folks a resolution. If you liked what you saw in 2012, if you liked what you saw at the end of 2012, you're going to see much, much more of it. And it's going to have a kaboom effect. It's going to have a bad so bite. Uh, sp- sp- go ahead. Go ahead. Well, you know, the fact is, when you see stuff like Tribune comes out of bankruptcy, run by Fox as entertainment guy, what it's going to be like a reality show right, exactly. running a newspaper. I mean, even that would suck. Uh, you know. Talk, uh, here's one, here's one for you. Talk about re- resolutions. Uh, Japan just had an election. They voted in oh, yeah. Shin- Shinzo Abe. Now, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe stated on New Year's Eve unequivocally that Japan is going right ahead and building more nuclear power plants. No ifs, no ands, no buts. Unequivocal building of more nuclear plants in Japan. Nuclear power rules that country. Nuclear power rules most every country it's in. Here's the perfect example. The Japan Times is outraged. And many of the people who voted for Abe actually are dying from radioactive poisoning right now. Slowly, but they're dying. Just ran another story about how much hair loss is being reported now, especially by females. Balding, young women, bleeding, pain, lymph nodes, more nuclear pants, says Abe. It's amazing. Not just Japanese people losing that hair and uh, getting radiation sickness. In just the last week, we've got U.S. sailors that were on the U.S. Oh, Ronald yeah. Reagan, and they're going to yeah. sue the Japanese government. They want tens of millions of dollars, and you can bet the U.S. government will thwart them every step of the way. We have soldiers in harm's way over there. you got, you got, you know, when people think, well, okay, uh, so they... Build a bunch of these good plants. What's it mean to me? You know, we wouldn't be talking. We wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for three nuclear plants in Japan go blowing up and spewing all this crud into the air and into our ocean and wrecking the Pacific since March 11, 2011, if it wasn't for that. And so here you've got a, 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 an island that probably has more earthquakes than any other island in the world. Let's build it. What do you got on this side? We've got a nuclear regulatory commission that's on autopilot with the jet heading right for the wall. And we had the former head of the NRC, a guy named uh, Keith Jaco, I think, yeah. uh, or J- Jasco. Jasco. Uh, and Jasco. And th- this fellow, everybody thought, you know, he was forced out because he wanted to take a harder line in the guidance of 104 nuclear reactors around the United States and and this guy, you know, they, they forced him out. Well, he, he had this pearl of wisdom since we've last talked. He said, in the end, everyone has to keep in mind that the safety of the public is the number one responsibility. Whether you are a power plant owner, whether you're a worker at the power plant, or a local or state or national government official, everyone has to recognize the safety of the people is the most important issue. Now, I don't know, folks, if you have you, your pants on, because if you feel the breeze, it's him blowing that smoke. And that's the guy that's supposed to have been the good guy. Now, you know, fact of the matter is, we've got more Fukushimas in the making. That situation's not stabilized at all. These guys just sign off. You know what? We're going to do it. We're going to build more. Forget it. Who cares? You don't hear... We're one, basically, about the sailors suing, other than it's some sort of novelty. You know, they'll portray it. I've seen a couple, uh, I saw a couple of uh, press segments that I can't remember the source of, but just in passing, Jeff, where they, they were sort of portrayed as, as you know, whiners, crybabies. Exactly. And it's 47%. Yep. And uh, what? You got nuked? What, what? You know, kind of thing. And all this time, 
we find out in the last week we've got 10 million becquerels of cesium-134 and cesium-137 being released every single hour from reactors 1, 2, and 3. Every hour? Every hour. You don't see that in any so, of the papers here. No, Nowhere on the no. news media. It's amazing. So, you, the Pacific is dead and becoming a vast radioactive sewer, and it's coming over here. There, we ran one story today about how they're saying, well, some of that radioactive tsunami debris might be a little dangerous. Yeah, but you don't hear anything else about it. Well, it might be a little dangerous. You know, I mean, <laughs> no kidding. The fact of the matter is, is that that debris field is close to Hawaii. We can't. It's supposed to be three times the size of the U.S., and, or, yeah, I believe it's three times the size of the U.S. in its greatest extent, and it's affecting West uh, Hawaii. And in the last week, we've seen high radiation readings in Hawaii. And people are, uh, if you wonder, well, how is it that, say, a, uh, a radiation weather station on top of a mountain in Hawaii can pick up, uh, radiation that's in the Pacific? Well, as we talked about, and we just heard explored, exposed together, there's this phenomenon of uh, slosh and waves and sea spray, and uh, it it has imbued in it. Any of the radiation. marine layer, all of it, however many miles inland the marine layer goes, the moisture we're talking about is potentially carrying radionuclides. Oh, yeah. And these are the ones right that now. pack. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right now. These are the ones we've detected them here in L.A. Folks, just Go check out the last year. We've already written about this. If you can smell that sea breeze and you're on the Pacific, well, there you go. Doesn't mean that you're going to have enough uh, radioactive buckyballs in the soup out there to uh, get you. But you got to remember this. This isn't your typical typical kind of a poison. You know, uh, uh, when somebody smokes cigarettes and dies of lung cancer, they, they get they die. During that period of time, they could have a family, you know? Family would be kind of bummed out that dad smoked himself into the grave. But regardless, he could have a family and no real consequences other uh, other than, you know, uh, feed old, some problems, but not ones that I can name off the top of my head easily. With radiation, once you're exposed, if you are exposed in enough of a way that it affects your genetic code, you could pass on the damage done to you to further generations. And that damage can be amplified. It doesn't go away. It does. It gets worse. So when you hear us talking about all this, you know, an ounce of prevention, yeah, uh, number one. Number two, if you got kids sitting in the next room and they're having a good old time drinking their Martinelli's apple juice or whatever on New Year's Eve, you might think twice about uh, just ignoring the issue and keep coming back to the rinse program because that's where you hear about it. Well, listen, my friend, you are very much appreciated. You and Denise Ann have made enormous contributions not only to this program but to the people of this country, especially Southern California, and I, and I hope that series wins some recognition that should win the best series of the year. We'll see. Um, my best to you for 2013. We're going to need it. Take care and talk to you soon, Michael. Thank you very much, Denise. Let's wave and happy new year to you and everybody. Thanks. Okay. Be well. Talk soon. Thank you. Right. Bye bye.